Are you ready to have church?
<laughs> he was driving to Birmingham. I guess he didn't sleep or something. He kept me on the phone for two hours. <laughs> and I said, oh, I want to get there. Oh, and, and then his boss was in the league. Uh, and, and sometimes he dropped down to 56, 60, oh, 70 mile an hour. He dropped down to 60 mile an hour. Said, oh, come on. Sometimes we get impatient because it seems like it's getting slow. The brakes are getting put on. And we're wanting to uh, put it up there with his boss. Uh, the company car has a title bill. If he goes five miles over, it tells him. So he would have to keep it uh, in a certain range. So, you know, we don't always know. Maybe there's a certain range God wants us to stay in. But it's, it's up for us to just hang on and stay there for the ride. Because there's nothing that he can't do. And, uh, you know, Philip, the Lord told him, he's, he's just up to us to play. The Lord told him to go down and join yourself to that chair. And uh, he went down there and joined it. Set to the chair and eat the open with reading in the scriptures. And he asked him to explain it to him. And then they come across the water and he said, Well, what hinders me to be baptized? And he said, Nothing if you believe, except the Lord is your Savior. And the Bible says that after Philip came up out of the water and, and baptized him, the Spirit of the Lord, not being me up, Scotty, but the Spirit of the Lord, picked Philip up and transported him. And he was into another city and he was preaching there. So I, that can happen again. You know, everything that happened was an example for us. And I've heard some preachers say they believe in the last days and it will happen again. And you know, uh, the disciples was out there rolling and rolling and Jesus was up on the hillside watching them and the waves were going in and they, they would go two feet forward and the wind would push them back the street. They wouldn't get anywhere. So Jesus finally was walking down across the waves. And the Bible says in John, if you want to read it, as quick as he stepped in the boat. Now the other give the story, but John's the only one that says this part. So as quick as Jesus stepped in the boat, immediately the ship was at the other shore. Where they had been trying to go all night long. They had been uh, pulling against the oars and trying to get there all night long, but as quick as Jesus got on board, they were there. So, you know, you might say, well, I'm going to fight this for a long time. When he gets on board, it'll happen. Have you invited him on board yet? You know, when they see him coming, they oh, it's a spirit, you know. And finally, the Lord said, is that? So then they invited him on board. We got invited him into our call. Yes, yes. You know, he, he sat there watching us and said, come on, come on. Yeah, anybody ever watched that uh, wrestling? That supposed to be real, real, but it's kind of like that news. And, and you know, they're, they're, here, 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 let me, let me, you know, the other one's in the, in the middle of the ring getting supposedly beat to pulp. And, and, and here, here, let me, let me in. That's where the Lord is. No, no, you didn't beat to pulp. Let me in. Tag me. And a lot of times we just sit there and say, I wish the Lord do something. We don't wish. Invite him in and believe. And when he sits in your problem, it's going to be over. So we just need to uh, read it, the word, get it in us, and let it build our faith. And let, it, let the Lord fight our battles. He said he would fight our battles. He's a far bigger uh, fighter than we are. And uh, he can hit the target every time. We miss a lot of times. But I just thought this week as I was reading, you know, Paul. He, he shelled out a lot of victory to the Christians and then he had to, he suffered a lot, but yet he said that through all of it, uh, it didn't, didn't pull back on his desire to do what God had told him. They, the prophet tried to tell him, you know, you go to Jerusalem, you're going to be bound, you're going to do this. And he said, I don't care. The Lord's told me to go and I'm going. And if Satan can scare you out of it, uh, he won. But if we can be like Paul and say, whatever, don't go, whatever, go. I'm going to do what the Lord tells tell me to do. So uh, we're entering that time that we're going to have to have a made up mind. Because there's a lot of forces out there that's trying to shut the church down. But uh, the old song on my mind's made up. Put song on the rock. Put on the rock. And uh, he is that solid rock. So, all right, enough for me. Uh, we're going to receive the morning tithes and offerings. 
talk about Canando and Miss Ferry, he called an expert in advertising, thinking, well, maybe we can do something. Because you can't just lay down and go, well, I'm just going to give up and die. Yeah. So this advertising expert told him, okay, what are you going to do? I don't know. So he picked up the phone, this advertising expert picked up the phone, and he called the only billboard company in town and told them to put up a big sign on the top of this barber shop. And the billboard company said, and what do you want me to put on the billboard? He said, in great big letters, I want you to put Wheat Bix $6 haircuts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I know someone that has had me, I'm a novice of haircuts, has had me straighten up. One of those, I, I don't know what it costs, but one of those haircuts because they didn't do a good job. So we all know that that happens. Another, along the similar line, another shopkeeper was really sad because a brand new business moved to the right of him. And they put up this big sign that read, Best Deals in Town. He was horrified when another company moved to the left of him. With an even larger sign that said, lowest prices. He said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Sometimes we feel like we, we don't know what to do when everything doesn't seem to be going the right way. So he had an innovative idea. He put up an even bigger sign over his own shop that read main entrance. <laughs> main entrance. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Some may have the best deals. Some people may make you feel like they have the best deals. Some people may make you feel like they, they got the lowest prices there. They can do more, get more. But the shopkeeper was not paying because he owned the main entrance. I want to say this to you. You own the main entrance when you got Jesus. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. When he is in us, it can't get any better than that. <laughs> so I just imagine the way that first barber fell was probably pretty much like Israel felt, panicked when leaving in Egypt. I just got a feeling they felt a lot that way when they ran up to the Red Sea. These were obstacles they didn't know what to do about. And a lot of we get obstacles we just absolutely don't know what to do about. But if we have Christ, somebody say, in us, we've got the main entrance. <laughs> You with me? So I can hear Israel. They had God with them. They had the tabernacle in the wilderness. And I'm going to use a few things concerning the tabernacle in the wilderness today. But I can almost hear Israel as they were coming out of Egypt saying, food's different. No leeks and garlic. I can almost hear them say, don't have any job now, even though they were dying in the job they were in. I can hear them say, hey, well, our old boss is behind us, chasing us, and we're going to be dead anyhow when he fetches us. I mean, what they said in Exodus 14, look, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? So that's what they were thinking. And maybe they said, now the Red Sea had us blocked. Now what? What are we going to do now? But in spite of how they felt, God was giving them a witness to everything that he told them to do that would change their lives. And I want you to stay with me. And my prayer is that this will open up to you during this sermon, I hope sooner rather than later. 
The children of Israel saw miracles, and those miracles saved their lives. They saw them. They had miracles, and they saved their lives. God saved them, and in the doing of that, he was teaching them how to live in this life of success. And overcome the obstacles, and overcome the things that hit us flat in the face. We don't know what to do. But God is there. God told them through Moses, and this is the scripture I want you to hang on to because there's something about doing this that made them to know, like we know today, Christ in us is our hope of glory. So Exodus 25 and 8, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among or in them. Today it's in us. And that day it was to dwell among them. On your bulletin, I've given you a, a little chart of how that they set up and they made their encampment. And there's something about that chart that will show you something big as we go along. We need to understand the importance of because we cannot lose the presence of God. We must have his presence. It is vital. It is important. And especially in today's, this day. Today. The way things are. The ark represented God's presence with man. Where was the ark? It was in the tabernacle. There was an outer court. And there was a holy place. In the outer court was a brazen altar and a brazen washing layer. In the holy place there was table of shoe bread, the golden candlestick, and the altar of incense. And right behind the altar of incense, there was a veil. And do you remember that when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was rent from the top to the bottom? What did that re veil represent? A stopping, a blockade between God and man. Because only the high priest could go in there. But when Jesus died on the cross, what was represented in the tabernacle became a reality in Jesus Christ. Somebody shout the glory now. Glory. glory. Hallelujah. So the ark represented God's presence with man, and it was on the other side of the veil in the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. So God taught them that he was well within them the tabernacle. When you read the types and the shadows and the, uh, and the things that he is saying, let, let's read a few scriptures in the uh, New Testament concerning it, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. And that's what he's saying. Within the veil is where the high priest would go. And he would be there before the ark of the presence of God. And he would be able to be in the presence of the Lord. So the veil then was rent because the veil was a separation because in that day they could not go in unless they were the priest. Now listen. So that entered into that within the veil. And the veil representing the tabernacle separation between God and man. And Jesus said, I am the door. Are you here? I am the door. See, we couldn't get into God before. Not without the blood of bulls and goats and the pushing away of our sins upwards towards the next year. But when Jesus came and he gave his life on the cross, he had told them, I am the door and the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. There he is. Jesus. Jesus. Got to get to Jesus. The Old Testament, the high priest went in. Now, let me read a few more scriptures and we're going to do some more explaining. Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God is where? Within us. 
within me. Somebody say, within me. Colossians 1, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ, say it this way, Christ in me. Say it, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Are you listening? She is. All right, Romans 8 and 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so be that the spirit of God dwells where? In you. Somebody say in me. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of him. He must dwell in us. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells where? In you. This is the scripture God took me to when Della had flatlined in the hospital. And the Lord just began to leave me. I didn't know what I was going to do. But, um, her daughter just pushed me up there to the head of the bed where, where uh, Della was. And, and I just began to pray. And this scripture just began to roll out of me. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. And it's over and over and over that flat line began to go beep, beep, beep. Because Jesus Christ lived within her, her spirit. She hadn't gone to heaven yet. She was there. I've heard a lot of times I'll just kind of float over and they'll see a lot of things before they make that destination. But that's supposed to be a, a pretty nice destination. He that raised up Jesus from the dead. He dwells in me. Somebody say he dwells in me. He's in me. He's in me. Now, in the encampment of Israel, let's go on. We find camped in the center, if you look at that, if you look at that in your, your bulletin, there is smack dab in the center, there's the tabernacle. And around that were the priests. To the east was the high priest. And all around on each side were tribes of Levites and priests. And then around them, it's all of the tribes of Israel. But smack dab in the middle. I believe God was teaching us something. You keep the Lord right in the middle of your life. If he is right there in the middle of your life, something good's going to happen in your life. The encampment. As a tabernacle is a type of Christ and his people, it was the meeting place of God with man. And we know Christ is the meeting place or mediator. Somebody say Christ is a mediator because not the same. We know that, don't we? Because of the high priest. He's, he's our great high priest. Who is touched with the feeling of our heart? But he's a mediator between God and man. But the, but God was showing them this in the Old Testament tabernacle. He's going to come and he's going to come into your heart and your life. After Jesus came and he gave his life and he shed his blood and Jesus took that blood to the heavenly tabernacle. Sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. We get mercy now when we come and we call upon Him. We know Christ is that meeting place, mediator between God and man. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Now God camps with His people. Every time this, every time this up, God camps with His people. See that? It's right there. God camps. With his people. 
His plan was always that he would dwell in us and be our God. He leads us, he cares for us, he loves us. We're the bridegroom. The bride, and he's the bridegroom. And he speaks to us with a soft voice because he loves his bride. We, the church is the bride of Christ. It's just a type. The flags of the tribe of Israel point to him. The real banner of God, he's Jehovah Nisi. The real banner of God is Jesus. These banners that were with the children of Israel, surrounding they all, each tribe, had banners. Four faces. Four colors. They speak to him, but the faces, he's our standard. He's lion of the tribe of Judah. We all know that one. He's the ox. And he's man, picture of man in Reuben and of the eagle in Dan. All of these are representative, and I don't have time to cover that today. But let me tell you, the Lord, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, is our banner, and we surround him, lifting him up, and he's in the very center of our lives, even as he was in the very center of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and that's all good. As the Levite stood between man and God, Jesus stands man. And a wrathful God before Jesus came. Are you listening? Because we couldn't get to God. We couldn't, not without the blood of bulls and goats, without the blood of animals. A lamb, a pastoral lamb. But he pointed to this lamb over and over and over through the word of God, over and over. And then the tabernacle in the wilderness, and he said, hmm, make me a sanctuary. And this was a floating, a moving about well, for 40 years. This tabernacle moved about. So we couldn't get to God. There was no way. Our sins would be pushed ahead one year. We'd meet him again in a year. How many would like to have a salvation like that? And he said, I'm going to come. And I'm going to be that mediator, the pastor for life. And he said, I'm going to die on the cross, and I'm going to give my blood. No one else and no more animals will ever need to shed their blood again. Because I'm doing this as God's son. Anyone that comes unto me, I will not cast out. And he becomes a bridge between him, us and the Father. I can see him as he is inter making intercession for us as he sits at the right hand of the Father of God. I can see, St. Father, that Brandon's my son. He came. I will shed my blood for him. He's ours. Intercession. Are you listening? Intercession. He's covered by my love. Hello? I can see him as he just, he looks. And sometimes we get so anxious. Am I all right, Lord? Listen to me. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Sometimes the enemy will come and he'll drive something up from 40 years ago, two years ago, or huh? whatever. Don't go in front of your face. What about this? What about this? And you ask God for forgiveness for that. A long time ago. And Jesus says, Father, that devil is lying about that person. Are you here? And he becomes that mediator. He became that mediator to bring us to Christ, uh, to God the Father. And the Christian will never, ever see the angry side of God. Are you listening to this? People are afraid. What, what if he's wrathful or vengeful towards me? Is the blood of Jesus on your life? 
Did you ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins? You said yes. <laughs> yes, we ask. He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all sin. But we have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he's the cleanser. We say, thank God. Praise God for that. Now, if we sin again, asking to forgive you again, do I see? Get it over with. <laughs> Face the music. Because let me tell you, one day we won't stand at the judgment seat. We won't stand there and plead our case. Whatever's written in the book, remember I preached about that here a while back. Whatever's written in the book, it's not covered by the blood of Jesus. But it's covered. Somebody say it's covered. It's covered. Hallelujah. John 17, 22, 23. In the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Jesus is talking to his Father. And that they may be one just as we, you and I are one, I in them, and you in me. What did he say? I in them. Jesus in me. Say that. Jesus in me. I in them, and you. <laughs> and you in me. Whoa. And somebody say in the Holy Spirit too. <laughs> oh, wow. That they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me, just like you loved Jesus. John 6, 28, 29, and then they said to him, what shall we do? That we may work the works of God. And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Believe. Trust him. Let him in if you haven't already. Speaking to anyone listening to this, whether streaming or here. Hebrews 7 22. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he also is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession for who? Somebody say me. Me. He lives to make intercession for me and you. Can you put your hand over your heart and say he makes intercession for me? Intercession. Isn't that powerful? Don't you feel that? Isn't that enormous? He makes intercession for me and you. Wow. The tabernacle was in the middle of the encampment, the very middle. The tabernacle being a type of Christ. All, did you know all scripture is written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit? The Bible is God breathed. We look at it that way because that's the way Jesus looked at it. In fact, he said, I am the Word. <laughs> So when we look at the tabernacle with this special significance, its symbolism, its types, its shadows down here, everything pointed to Christ. It all did. Everything pointed to him. And God was saying, look, look here. I'm telling you, put me in the middle. And you surround them. And he was saying, one day, I'm going to come, and I'm going to get my life, because I want to live in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hebrews 10 and 20, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is his flesh. He tore that veil. Do you remember that scripture? Was ripped from the top to the bottom. No man could have done that. It was too big. No one person could have torn that veil. Only God could have torn that veil. Because he said, Now come boldly unto the throne of grace, wherein you may find help in your time of trouble. Come boldly unto me, he says, because the veil is rent. 
the obstacle that has stopped you of all of the millenniums is now taken away. But the Christ who was there in the middle, in the type and in that shadow, and as long as they kept him in the middle, that was important because they needed Christ to help them get into that promised land. Some of them reneged, and some of them said, no, there's too many giants up there. No, 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 I can't do that. So Moses died. Caleb and Joshua raised up. I can still hear Caleb say, give me that mountain. I want my mountain. It was promised me. <laughs> There's my mountain. There no obstacles going to stand in my way. Any obstacles going to stand in your way? Everybody say no. No obstacles. Colossians 2 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Represents this true tabernacle in heaven. Hebrews 9 and 11, that Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, but the greater and more perfect tabernacle, the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not the one in the wilderness that was showing them the way. That was a type of Christ in you, know, but a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is not with this creation. <laughs> the presence within the holy of holies. I want to get to that. I want you to come with me on that. That presence that was behind the veil in the holy of holies. And the high priest would minister before that mercy seat. And Jesus said, I am the temple of God. That's that word Mishkan. I'm the Mishkan of God. And when the Shekinah glory would come down in this hour, would come down like a tornado or funnel right through the roof of that holy of holies. And the presence would manifest on that mercy seat. It's all like on the mountain all over the smoke. Woo! Wow. You're on the mercy seat. Well, don't you, can't you read that? It's his mercy that he reaches out to us. It's by and through his mercy. And it was between the cherubim and after the blood was sprinkled. That was the mission. Power. How wonderful presence. And that presence was what Jesus said dwelt within him. When I say Christ in me, Christ in you, in glory, it's more than just a word, more than just a sight. Can you imagine when that? Present, that Mishkan of God came down in the Shekinah glory, and that funnel cloud came down and pierced the top of that tent and came down and sat on that mercy seat between the cherubim. That's a powerful presence. We may not see that, but I'm telling you, there have been times in my life I have felt that. And I hope there to be a more. You. We had a, a revival. That's it been a couple of years ago. With cousin and cousin. Amen. It was wonderful. But for some reason, all of our, I mean, the people that were here were filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Y'all remember that. And I thought of that when this message began to materialize in my heart and in my spirit. And they all began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave utterance. It's mission. The presence dwelt within Christ. And Paul said this about the church. You, me, us. Know ye not that you are the mission or the temple of God? 
you are a mission from the temple of God. We as the body of Christ have the same presence dwelling within us. The problem is we don't access it often enough. Are you listening? How do you do that? Forget about everybody else. Have you ever been in church and you tried to raise your hands and you tried to get in and all you can think about is who's looking at me? Ah, oh, if I can only hide and worship him. Have you ever felt like that? But it's that knowing it's just you and him. And he's right here. And we access that presence of the Holy One that is within us, and He rises up within us, and miracles begin to happen. Gifts of the Spirit begin operating. Now, what is your gifts? What are, what are your gifts? Use them for Jesus. He dwells within us. Verse 26, I think. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God and you are not your own. His presence literally dwells within us. Within you. His presence. I believe this message is to help you to realize you don't have to be pastor of the church. You don't have to be uh, a, a, a revivalist going to church. To church. You don't you, you don't have to be a teacher. You just need to know he's in you. In your heart. You can overcome every obstacle. You may be driving down the road and you need him. Don't have time to call anybody. And I've done that before. Even before I ever became a pastor. And Jesus was right there. And he taught him through this tabernacle. Let, he said, let me be in the center of your encampment. Never preach this message just like this, but I see it. Let me be in the very center. When, you, when he's in the center, everything revolves around him. What am I going to do today, Lord? Hello? What am I going to do today, Lord? Have you ever done that? What, what were me and you going to do today? That's a good thing. Make that a question as soon as your legs come out of bed or maybe even just a little bit before it. What are we going to do today? And you're going to carry him with you wherever you go. And Christ in you just shines out. It's unmistakable because his presence is powerful. You just need to acknowledge it. Acknowledge his presence is in you. Christ is in you. Moses spoke to God face to face. But Christ is in you. That's pretty powerful. That's awesome. I know your heart say Christ is in me. Holy Spirit is in me. God is in me because God is in Christ. Hello? Christ is in you. No obstacles can keep us out. Nothing. When he is in the middle of our lives. Marvin Gay wrote that song that I turned it around to look at. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough. Christ will always come through for you. Christ will always come through for you. Because he's in you. No barriers. You've got the door. The entrance. The entrance. And I pray that you got this today because he is in you. And now you and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.
all things through Christ. Ooh, some of that ought to be shouting words. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop you. Nothing. Did you get that today? Christ is in me. It's powerful. If you feel like you're failing, say, I'm sorry. What do you do when do you ever have a crossword between you you as a couple? Don't answer that out loud. Do <laughs> you ever have a crossword or a cross time? What do you do about it? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Fix it. Just fix it. Don't go to bed without fixing it. That's what the scripture says. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Just fix it. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough. Christ will always come through for you. He always will because he lives in you. Within me is better than face to face. He is better than Moses had. Did you get anything out of this? Did you receive this? In the middle of our encampment, they always did it just that way. Always. And that type of that shadow says, let me be the driving force within you. You're going to see some great things in your life. You're going to see obstacles roll back. Yeah. Pastor Lewis and I, next month, will celebrate another one of those anniversary things. Mm -hmm. Been a few years, I it? We sat on the front seat of the church and held hands like this so Pastor Ford couldn't see. But we were on the front seat of the church. We were getting something from God. Couldn't they, except on the front seat of the church. Pretty safe place. <laughs> from the time I was 15. Then three years rolled by. We got married. But that promise was there between us. One day we're going to be together. We have been 58 years. Now, if you didn't sit on the front seat of the church in that three years, maybe it was three months, doesn't matter as long as you know. Had some weddings around here last couple, about two years ago or so. In two years? Almost three. Huh? Almost three? Almost three years. She started it all. <laughs> Almost three years. Then two years. Be three for y'all coming. No, be two for y'all coming. December the first. And Cammy and Chris come. Is it June? July. July. There's June and there's July. December. Have weddings. My big thing in all of that is keep Jesus in the center of your life and you're going to be okay. Forgetting, you're not going to make it. Christ in you is your hope of glory. Amen. And it's so good to see two of y'all. Here, and I'm sure the others are in their church. Amen. That's important. But where are you? 
I want to talk to you in the strength where you, and I know some of you can't even go out of your house because of the situation, but Christ is right there. And if you have given your heart and life to him, he's in you. And he loves you and he cares. He cares for you. Call on him and he will answer. Stretch your, your hands out, your heart towards him, towards heaven, and feel the Holy Spirit rise up and thin your heart. He loves you, he cares for you, and there's nothing he won't do for you. And I started to say a while ago, 58 years for my husband and I, we've never seen God forsake us. We may have seen a hard time or two, but God always helped us to overcome those hurdles, those obstacles. And he'll help you to overcome those obstacles and those hurdles. He loves you. Just give it all to him, and I'm just making this call right now to you if you do not know the Lord Jesus. He is not in your heart and life. It's because you haven't asked him in. Just tell him, forgive me. Ask him, forgive me. Forgive me of anything I've ever done that is wrong. And help me, Lord. Help me on my path to overcome every obstacle because I want to spend eternity in heaven with you. So here I am right now. I give it all to you. Thank you, Lord. And for you that need a healing in your body, I speak over you that there's healing, health, and hope. This is covering you right now. Hmm. Jehovah Rapha, our healer, is in the house. And I break down that sickness and disease from off of you, not only in, in this room, but here in this building. Sickness and disease, you've got to be broken down. You've got to go in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, because you hear us when we call. And you help us to overcome. And right now, Lord, I give it all to you. Here it is. You're my all in all. You're everything. You're in the center of my life now. Stay in the center of my life. Every morning, wake me up to the knowledge that you're right there with me. As I jump out of bed and I say, yes, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Be with me all day long and help me because I want you to tabernacle with me in my heart all day and that I know consistently you are there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I give it all to you right now. Somebody shout glory. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I pray that every single person under the sound of my voice right now, that you are giving them that, that goading on the inside, that, that you are there and that that power, that, that this powerful presence of God is right there in the, in the Rise up now, Holy Spirit. Rise up within every single person. Rise up and let the healing power of the Most High be done in Him all day long, all week long, through the months, through the years, until You call us away. You come and get us and catch us away. And we thank You, Lord, because we're kept by the power of the Most High. We're saved by the blood of Jesus, and our high priest is always there making intercession for us. And I thank you, Lord, that you are keeping our sons and our daughters and our families, and you're helping the families of those that are listening today. You're helping them and encouraging them to rise up and to be all that they can be in this world. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm praying right now that 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 holy funnel, Hallelujah! That that uh, a powerful funnel of the Holy Spirit just rests upon and in each one of you as you go your way. That every single person you meet today is going to go. Woo! 
must be the power of the Lord on them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was said a long, long time ago. And I heard this and I, it's ever been in my, my heart. It said so much of the power of God dwelling in you that you are recognizing and causing to come on up in you. Call him up inside of you. And so much so that if I... <laughs> If a bee came by and stung you, he would go off singing. There's power, power, power in the blood. <laughs> power in the blood of Jesus. And he's in you, in your life. Remember that always. Call him up the first thing in the morning. Call him up the first thing in the morning. Say, so just arise in me. Arise inside of me and let me know that from my head to my toes, from my fingertips, to the very extremity of my body, that I know that I know that I know that the Holy Spirit, that God in Christ Jesus, dwells in me. And as I am an overcomer, hallelujah, are you an overcomer? I'm an overcomer, amen. Did you get it? Do you understand? Call him up. First thing in the day, Holy Spirit calls him up in there. You've got the Holy Spirit's voice. Amen. It's good. Holy Spirit's in you. Bless you, so listen to this beautiful song. Holy Spirit. Thank you. 